Turning to Apple, it's 3.03 and I'll call this uh, special meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order of February 8th. And sorry, I've lost track of my, oh, hang on one second. <laughs> Too many windows open. Okay, so our first item of business is the operating budget. So um, just to, you guys have the board has the documents in front of them? I yes, I do. Okay. Um, so I just want to do some shuffling of the deck chairs. Uh, we're going to be basically um, referring to that document, obviously. And okay. There we go. <sighs> I think I have everything figured out now. It's sort of, it was a last minute add of a couple of people in the other room there. Um, so if you look at just starting at the first page of the document um, and you look at the those proposal submissions received. So on that page, there are basically 64 expected submissions. We've received 47 so far. Um, we're missing four, but um, I'm sorry, three, but expect to receive them. They either don't come in, haven't, haven't normally come in by now. Um, so we would be expecting those. Um, on the budget document, it is what's, I have 2323. Um, where was I? Um, so there are a number of um, buckets that we need to attend to. One bucket is for, we haven't received nine submissions and those are either associations or grantees that we um, you know, give grants to in whatever form. How, do, how does the board wanna handle these um, nine submissions that we haven't received yet. Are we gonna, so what Barbara has, um, and Barbara, feel free to jump in here. Um, she would have put what uh, they had last year. That's fine for now. Timestamp is 423. Um, do we want to reach out once to them and give them a deadline to submit a proposal or a request rather? Yes, there should be a deadline. Well, there there was a deadline. <laughs> that, <laughs> well, well. <laughs> um, but do we wanna give them um, another opportunity or are we going to go right with um, what what the number was for last year? Let me just jump in here. Since I posted this budget document, I've received, the assessor has submitted their information and I have updated information for some of the building department and P and Z. So I think it's a fluid document at this point. And I expect to get the rest of the submissions very shortly. So we would expect from those nine or so um, grantees and associations, like one of them is LCD. I know because I sit on their board that they were a little bit behind with their budgeting. So I know that one's gonna come in, but there's a number of ones that we haven't received. Should we, does the board wanna reach out? Barbara, do we expect something from everybody? I do. And I think at this point it's too early to to worry about those. I think okay. within the next couple of days, 
or by the end of next week, I'll probably have all of them. Okay. So we won't, we won't, we don't have to make a plan for those. Well, I agree, except like the welcome center, who's in right, charge that was of my next bucket. that one? Yeah, that's my next bucket. Oh. So the, the next bucket that I'd like to talk about are um, attorney fees, which is line, something I didn't have on my cheat sheet here, line, uh, I think it's 216. I have a hole punched there, but 216 through 220 is the are the lines. So you can see the um, that bottom line has increased um, over the years. Right now we have. I think um, one pending lawsuit and we just received a, a claim which would be going, which has gone out to Kerma already. I don't know what would happen with that, but it's, um, it's with Kerma. Well, we may have more. Um, I was talking to Jen today it's a revalue so oh. um, we may end up with and we thought it would be wise to possibly prepare for pending cases from them um i know that you know my neighbors up on carter road have not necessarily counted out legal action against the town. So that may happen again. So as far as for the reval, is that number, where do you want to go with that number right now, that number? Um, well, just, uh, there, may, there may be possible litigation coming in Right, so in anticipation and um, Barbara, is it, can you see if there was um, what the legal line was for the last reval year, if we had, was there one? You're that, talking about lawsuits? Yeah. Reval lawsuits? Well, not a lawsuit per se, um, a, because it goes to BAA before it goes to court. So right. are you saying that you know, you have knowledge this is, that- This is, this, these are folks that um, are fighting assessment. Yeah. So it's already gone through BAA. Not yet. Oh, well. But you're saying because it's but a reval year. It's the reval year. So right. when people get- their um, process, you know, sometime later in, in um, 2023-24, there could be, you know, we're not going to know at this point in time, but we, it's a reval year. So we may, we may get hit with uh, somebody very unhappy because of their reval. Um, it entirely depends, you know, on on change of values and things like that. Jen Dubray, I think I saw you on the call. I don't have everybody on my screen. Um, do you want to jump in here? Yeah, I just thought it wouldn't be a bad idea. I don't know where the reval is going to go after the BAA process next February. There might be some people who do want to go take it to court. So I thought if you were mindful of the legal line for that next fiscal year, it might not be a bad idea.
also the court case we're in currently will overlap into right. the next fiscal year as well. In other reval years, um, do we have an? I mean, do we have an idea of what that number was in other years? Where right. this Wasn't there one from the last reval year, John? Uh, there have been two. One was the old nursing home. I think that was the 2013 reval. And at one point we had one other court case. I'm not sure if it was 2018 or right around there. I think it must have been later because it was when since I've been here. Uh, no, I'd have to look it up. And Barbara, do you know what the cost of that was? Let's say the the most recent one in 2018, 2019. Time frame? I'm uh, not off the top of my head because okay. a lot of times it goes over more than one fiscal year. So right. I can compile that information and certainly send it around to everybody, but I don't have it without unless you want me to look it up now and I'll get back to you in 10 minutes or five minutes or something. Yeah, that other one must have been in uh, 2018 for the reval. Okay. Um, but we never really know. Right. Now that revals are every five years, um, the shock is lessened. One word. Because when they were 10 years apart, you might have a, a mass difference much larger difference in the valuations and then people were all up in arms. So do we want to put 5,000 in? I don't, you know, I mean, that's something to think of at this point in time. I don't know what's a realist, realistic number. Um, you want to wait until Barbara comes back with what the number was from the last one? You know, but it, it, it just, Jen and I thought it might, it might, be better not to get caught shorthand. Okay, so why don't we give Barbara a little time and at next Wednesday's meeting, um, Barbara, if we can just get that from you. That would be great. And which line are we looking at like, specifically? That would be 217. 217. 217. Okay. Um, welcome center, which is line. Where is that? Two, uh, three twenty-two. So we, the um, two years ago, we under budgeted for this, um, but it looks like it's gonna be in line with that 20,000 anticipated number that Barbara has projected. I think we should leave it in at that same rate. The bathrooms get cleaned um, once a day. And that's what the lion's share of that money is for. I submitted 25,000 when I submitted the other building locations uh, only because small repairs and things aren't covered under that, the amount that's currently in there. So I increased it to 25. <clears throat> oh, okay. Why does it show up as 20? I don't know. I'm not sure that Barbara saw it because it's not checked as one that was received, but I'm looking at what I submitted and I have it that I put in 25,000 for that particular location. That would be what happened is I didn't pick it up on Joyce's documents. Okay. Work in progress. Yeah, for sure. No problem. Okay. Early in the process. All right, so, um, Moving on, um, cybersecurity and cybersecurity insurance. Um, 
we just got the report back in the last, I want to say three weeks, four weeks from the cybersecurity assessment that the National Guard did. And there's a number of things that we have to put in place. Um, I don't think we can even get a quote until we put these things in place. I've been working with Bob and I hope to have a plan by the February 25th meeting to um, go over with the board so that we can start implementing these things. The cost of cybersecurity insurance last year, we were able to get a quote, was a little over $14,000. What line would this relate to? I'm sorry, this would be... Um, 245. Oh, cyber security was, what was the quote? Um, last year was 14,000. I assume it will be a little bit higher. The market is, um, Kerma has told us that the market is sort of, is very volatile because of what's happening um, in the landscape. So we do need to add that in because we really need to have that protection. But that, that was in last year. No, we, we did not put it in last year. Because these the uh, these companies that offer cyber insurance are requiring a number of um, steps. Yeah, a number of things that have to get put in place first. So even without that in, we only exceeded our budget by a few thousand. For that, are you talking about that line? Yeah. Um, the insurance line. That line includes our liability and workers comp currently. That's where the 5% increase is reflected. And that's a, that comes from Kerma. That's not something that we have control over. So the 5% proposed is of of the 110 the five percent is no the, 12 yes yeah so you're saying that we want fourteen thousand or more on top of that right we need to add this coverage But you don't know exactly what it will be. No, because I, um, they, we were just lucky to get a quote last year. But we'll be implementing these um, steps in the next probably three months. So by the new fiscal year, um, we'll have everything in place. So I think we should add it. I think it was 14.8 last year. So to be clear, so the barber knows how much to add and I have a number for the minutes. How much would you like to add to that line? That's what we're talking about. So if it was 14.8 last year and you're not sure, are you looking at 20? 18. I think if we, so it was 14861 last year. <coughs> and that was for the. So let's say we take that 14861. Yeah. 
and and add the 5%, just basing it on what Kerma is increasing their um, insurance with us, the LAP, it would be 15,604. Right, so. So we should probably go on the the conservative side and put in sixteen thousand. Why don't we make the line item one hundred and thirty three thousand? <clears throat> well, that's not even. That doesn't cover even that 5% increase projection. I was rounding up. You were rounding up? Well, it's, it's, uh, if, you, if you add the 5% in plus the 117,776, it's 133,380.05. Why are you adding 5% on top of the 117? The 117. I wasn't. Oh, <laughs> I was adding 5% to the quote from last year. Cybersecurity. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Huh. <laughs> so I added 5% to the quote from last year. That's 15,604 and rounded it up to 16,000. Well, I didn't round it up or down, and I just added the two. So 133000 is $380 short of 5% across the board. So you want to put in so 15224 to um, 133000 400. Right. We need a, a number for the line. Yeah. 15,224 is the difference between um, the 117,776 and 133. And you think it might be more than that? Yeah. So let's put in 134,000. Or 134.4. Let's put it 134,000. How about what? 134,000 total. Yeah, that should cover it. Sixteen two twenty four is the number that we're adding. Okay. Alrighty. Um, there are uh, some other cybersecurity measures that we'll need to be putting in place, but I'm still waiting on some numbers back. It won't be a lot but I'll probably have that ready for next week. Um, something else that we had, we've been sort of mulling around, uh, mentioned it to the Board of Finance a couple of times. They were, um, they had positive feedback on um, possibly hiring a um, part-time grants person, whether we hired a consultant or found a part-time um, Grant specialist. What are your thoughts on that? Who were you talking to about that? So we had I had mentioned it when we were talking about um, at the board of finance. I think I've mentioned it here a number of times with all the money that's coming down through the IAJA and the um, uh, 
the there's another big federal bolus of money um and we've got a lot of grants running in-house um and it would i think it would um would enable us to apply for and be able to fund a a, a lot of other projects possibly take care of some cap, some capital projects um but we're somewhat at our limit of as far as um resources for managing and running and applying for grants and grants have gotten incredibly complicated and that you know i don't want to spend time really digging into the weeds just looking for direction is that something you want us to um you know put together some sort of number for next week i think that would help so we're willing to you do want to at least have the conversation looking at the bottom line <laughs> I mean, a good grant writer can bring in quite a bit of money. Right. So, right. It's worth considering, but we need a ballpark figure. Right. <clears throat> okay. So I will work on that. Um, under line 257. Um, we have Andy Osef with us right in the other room. He was, there he is. And he, um, he sent us a letter mm -hmm. requesting the board of selectmen consider an additional resident state trooper, uh, funding for that be added to the budget. Hi, Andy. Hi. Hi, Rufus. Hi, Andy. Santos. So, Andy, do you want to um, just give us a postage stamp of your um, your thoughts as to why you sent us that letter? Okay, I will. Thank Thanks. you for having me here today. I have lived in Kent since 1969, and I served as your resident state trooper from July 1st, 1968 to February 28th, 1975. 50 years later, we still have one resident trooper. The resident trooper handles most of the criminal investigations in Kent. Even though troopers from Troop Bell, unless you'll respond to many of the accidents, and other matters in town, when the resident trooper is off, the information is passed on to him. Presently, we have an excellent resident trooper, Andrew Fisher, who has been here 10 years. It is time to reduce his workload. You may have observed Trooper Fisher parked in town, have wondered why he's there so much. Trooper Fisher is transmitting his reports to the barracks from his vehicle. When I was resident trooper, I was required to type my reports in my office. I was also on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I had to live in Kent and I took calls in the middle of the night, sometimes when there were emergencies and I got there before the trooper on patrol. Trooper Fisher's presence is important because residents observe and stop to discuss a variety of issues. The resident trooper investigates many cases that sometimes do not result in, in arrest and are time consuming. I can attest to that. I did it on many occasions where the victim or something did not want to prosecute or I, I did an excellent investigation first. When a major crime occurs, such as a homicide, the Western District Major Crime Division responds 
and a resident trooper is there to provide valuable information. I can attest to all that too because I was a detective with the major crime division. Ken is no longer a small community and the progress of increasing police presence in town has grown considerably and needs to be addressed. A second resident trooper would also be available as a first responder. He may be available to do the care program again at Kent Center School. I don't know at this point. It is time to move from the 20th to the 21st century. Thank you, them are my thoughts today. And I think we really need one. Thank you. Questions. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Questions? Any questions from anybody? Andy, you were going to submit, a, I believe, a, you were getting signatures. Are you going to be doing that at some point? Maybe at some points, but uh, the pro I guess the process is I have to go through the Board of Selectmen first. Okay. So, correct. So this is the first step. So the board needs to... Um, decide if we are going to add this to the um, this proposal. And I just want to hear from the board thoughts on um, adding that line item. And sorry, go ahead. Professor Glenn. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Mr. Rosa for, uh, for for doing this particular job all those years ago. Uh, you know, thank you, and thank you for your for your concern um, with uh, with all of this. Um, I, um, you know, we uh, we we certainly have been involved with uh, with talking about another trooper. We did that with the SRO. Um, we have been talking about um, you know in noise and traffic, maybe getting some other presence, whether a state trooper or a constable. Uh, we had been talking about that. Um, and uh, there has been a lot of talk uh, about getting help for Andrew Fisher, who does such a great job for our town. Um, but I, 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 I do want to point out that, uh, you know, we did have a town hall meeting about, about a second trooper. Um, and we did have a vote. We had a referendum and, uh, and that referendum for the SRO, who would then help out in the summertime after school, uh, was resoundingly defeated. Um, I forget what the vote count actually was, but I think it was 300 something to 100 something, I believe. Um, so um, so based, based on that referendum and based on what I've seen here with the budget, because we have a few other big budget items coming down the way, especially with the paramedic uh, uh, line with um, with New Milford dropping out of that consortium and those numbers going up considerably, I just worry that uh, we just don't have enough wiggle room uh, for another trooper. So, uh, so for that reason, for those reasons, I would say that I just can't support that at this time from my point of view. And Rufus, I, I I think that that is sort of the you know I I think Glenn that was well stated um, you know and it's nothing against Andy you made some good points but um, I don't know I don't see how we can add everything this year. And it's it's sort of an all or nothing. So you know you're adding two hundred thousand more to a budget that already is expanded considerably. Um, I sort of wish there was a a middle road, you know, where you could chair a trooper or something with a you know 
joining town, but um, to alleviate some of the burden. But I, I don't think the town, I think that those who came out and spoke said no, and we have to recognize that. <clears throat> And that was only a few months ago. Well, that was for a resource officer that would be sitting in the school five days a week when they had school. And it was $200,000. I don't think this an additional resident trooper would cost that much. Probably around 150. I don't know what the cost is going to be for Fisher next year. But again, when I was a resident, was eight thousand a year, and I made forty one hundred dollars a year. Big difference today. Yeah, that's our line item is two hundred eight. Two hundred thousand eight hundred eight hundred dollars. So I have a a little bit of a different view that I think is worth talking about. Um, I've been, you know, we've been talking about this for four years of we are on a standing on a cliff. And when you're standing on the cliff of do we add a new huge business machine or do we not? It's a very different cliff from do we add another resource to provide and protect for public safety. Um, the, you know, the, the consequences are huge. Um, we have an incredible increase of people coming here in the summer, visiting here in the summer, using our recreation in the summer, using places where they're not really supposed to recreate, but human nature and what people want to do is what people want to do, but we still have an obligation to protect and, and provide public safety. Um, it's, you know, it's hard to, it, it's hard to understand when you're not seeing it, when you're not getting the, the texts and the phone calls on the weekends from people who um, are asking you know, why are there 150 people on the riverbank up at North Kent Road or they can't drive through Bulls Bridge because there's just too many cars and our one trooper, if he happens to be on, on duty on a weekend, um, is up in North Kent <laughs> dealing with 150 people. Um, the other thing that concerns me is that I think the total... Um, the numbers for the minimum numbers for staffing for the state police are supposed to be a little over a thousand and or a little over 1200. And I think, I think there are about 400 troopers short. And that happened with a number of recent um, retirements. Um, and so the resources that we have access to are also going to be limited to a certain extent. Um, my view is that I think it's time for us to step up to this plate and um, be able to provide the public safety that we need to, to provide because doing it with one person, I have a, a list of, I don't know, six different roads that um, we've been requested to do um, either speed enforcement or um, basically speed enforcement. And it's tough to get to all of those places because Andrew has a number of other tasks and duties that he does in the course of a day. He's got investigations, he's got um, you know, requests for service that he has to respond to. So it's, um, there's, there's never downtime, that's for certain. And the, you know, the consequences are we, something terrible happens and then the three of us are at an emergency meeting or at a special meeting saying, well, 
good Lord, something terrible happened. And what we need to do is have a second trooper in town. And then we're doing it on a, this white knuckle approach instead of adding this, adding a second trooper to our, basically it's another tool in our toolkit and we're doubling the law enforcement um, assets in our town, which makes twice as much stuff that can <laughs> get, you know, those roads can get, you know, have more speed enforcement. There can be um, more ticketing, more interaction, more, um, a, I think a more a higher quality of public safety than, um, than with one person. And Andrew, he, he works a lot more hours than, uh, than we realize. Um, and, and it would also enable us to possibly give that trooper some time over at the school to create, to start to create that relationship with the, with Kent Center School, with the private schools. Um, there's only so many hours for one trooper, but if you double it, there's twice as many hours. So um, that's sort of my view on it. Can I add something? Sure. Any possibility for a grant under the federal COPS program? Um, yeah, we would certainly be looking for grant money, um, but we still have to budget for it. We can't assume that we would get um, a grant. Well, I just want to add about, so like Ms. Sanchez is talking about a constable, that would be, a, I'd say, 50% more than having a resident a second resident trooper for the following reasons. You have to provide a car. Yep. You have to buy liability insurance. Okay. You got to provide uniforms. You got to pay benefits. Okay. So it's going to be a lot more. The state police covers everything, liability insurance, everything like that. I was sued five times in my police career. Okay. And the state covered me all the time, but not anymore. The new troopers are out there, could have their houses attached. And right. it started last year through the legislature in Connecticut. Right. I know the some police troopers, accountability bill. Yeah. They reduced their standards. That's the biggest problem that the state police is having right now. And they don't like to go through the academy. I I went seven days or six days a week when I went through the academy. We got done three, three months. Now it takes six months and they have a dropout rate of about 40% to drop out through the academy. You start with a hundred, you're lucky to get 60 to, yep. to stay there. They leave because I heard this from one of, one of the training sergeants. They said they don't like being hollered at. Well, most of us that went back in after we were served our military, I'd say nine out of 10 had a military background. We could take orders and we had to on the state police. And I worked as an insurance uh, fraud investigator. I started a, a, a for a mortgage company and I saw a, a trooper that was on active duty where he was in, doing insurance fraud. I got him arrested. He lost his job, that kind of thing. So there are some bad apples out there and there's no question about it, but they've reduced the, the standards and they got a class now if they get there, I guess it's going to be in the spring. And they're starting out at 65,000 a year. All right. Now you might've read in the paper where some, they're so shorthanded or they're working overtime. Some of them are making 200,000 a year. It's blood money though. One day fall asleep. Look at that Sergeant last year up in Litchfield. He fell asleep, probably. I don't know. They, they can never find out what happened to him. But anyway, I thank you for your time. And that's what I wanted to offer. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Andy. And really to echo what Andy just said, the costs because of the police accountability bill and, and um, elevating the service that a constable provides. We've seen all over the state that big towns and small towns that are using those constables are getting rid of them and hiring second 
and third resident state troopers. The data is a huge one. Um, they are required to wear body cam, um, body worn cameras, and the municipality is um, responsible for the cameras, a, a backup camera. Um, that's not even the big cost. The big cost is the data. We would have to house the data. We would have to have the data be converted into and managed and converted into a format that's consumable by the public because all that data is FOIable. And if someone makes a request, we would have to have somebody capable of taking a video, you know, that video data. And these are huge, huge files. And being able to send that to um, a member of the public so that they can watch it, you know, conveniently um, on their own device. That would be, we would have to hire somebody to do that, whether that's an outside company or whether that's another part-time or full-time person. That, that I heard from a lot of um, first selectmen at the CCM conference that that's been a real big pinch point for them. Um, and there's all these ancillary costs. Weapons, we're responsible for the weapons. They would have to be stored. I believe they would have to be stored at town hall. They have to be um, weapons certified. I think it's every six months they have to go back. So they would be going out and that's on town time. So those would be days where they would be going out. And that happens now with the resident state trooper where they have to go to the um, state police um, ranges and requalify. So there's a lot more um, to it. And again, we get a turnkey service from the state police. Yeah, no, we, we've, we've been through a lot of that. And uh, and thank you, Andy, for, uh, you know, talking about the, you know, the negative quality, the negative aspects of having a constable. Um, but Rufus, I'll, uh, I'll agree with you. I mean, if, if there's some kind of middle, middle, middle way to do this. I mean, uh, you know, there are uh, large amounts of people on uh, on Bulls Bridge or, or North Kent Road in the summertime. Th there probably aren't today, and there probably won't be tomorrow. But um, but the summertime, absolutely. I mean, is there any middle ground here? Is there any way we can, you know, for can we get service from Troop L um, part of the year when there are pitch points? that won't cost us $200,000. So we do that now. If we have, um, when Andrew and I have our briefings in the morning in the summertime and there's a big weekend coming up like a holiday weekend or a you know a big event happening here in town, we'll make that decision based on you know yeah. past years, based on what's sort of going on currently. Um, to have him request a second trooper, but we pay for that. We pay overtime for that. Um, so those are, you know, you're paying, I think it's um, time and a half, maybe double time. I forget. Where does that, what line does that come out of? Is that the same line or is that um, like when yeah, those- Barbara, that all comes out of police protection. That's the entire line. Yes. Oh. My thinking is that, Gene, if, if you want a second trooper, you're going to have to provide concrete data. Um, I know at the, at the town meeting you were at, you know, you were asked for that. And, um, and so that has to be part of your argument. So, you know, um, just to simply say, in general, a constable would cost extra, would have to do this, that, and the other thing, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but um, this for this year's budget, with a lot of other very specific increases, I don't think people are going to support something that they voted down a few months ago. Um, and yes, part of it was, I agree, it was SRO specific uh, sure. duty at the school, 
that may or may not have been part of it, but you're not going to win the argument unless you have concrete data to support your, your thinking that we need a second trooper. <clears throat> so until that happens, um, I, don't, I don't see it being a viable increase. So when you talk about concrete data, what, um, because so well, we would know what the call volume is. Call volume. How does that, you know, response how does that time. How many incidents did uh, other troopers come to count? You know, um, I don't think a second trooper is gonna prevent speeding on, on Kent roads. Um, you know, walking up and down Cobble Road. That Most was of the people who speed through there are local people trying to get home from work or whatever. You know, maybe they start out slowly in the morning, but. Right, but with the second trooper, we would be able to have maybe. more speed enforcement. Maybe, you know. It's, well you don't live on 341, the motorcycles, they do 80, 90 miles an hour up my, by my house. And troopers, I don't know if you know, but they cannot chase motorcycles anymore. I chased quite a few when I was resident trooper. And that's not, a, I, I think Route 7 has got a really problem in the summer, 341 all the time. I live up near Warren on 341, and it's horrendous. It's horrendous. A couple of years ago, there was a fatal two motorcycles just down below my hill. And they were about 75 to 80 going down the hill when I saw them. And I wasn't surprised. They went to state police were called. One guy got killed, and the other one got off. Both of them. Yeah, that one was in bad shape. That's all I would like to add, but uh, I think we need the second resident trooper and for criminal investigation. That's what I said. And Trooper Fisher has been here 10 years. He knows the town, right? Who knows? Sooner or later, he's going to get burned out with all the complaints and he can't do much about them because he doesn't have the time but a second reduced second resident trooper would be very helpful. And if Trooper Fisher left, you'd get another resident trooper. It'd take him a year to even learn his way around town. Yeah. And I know uh, that Litchfield just got a second trooper. Right, they were one of the towns that did away with the they, constables. They had one year. The second trooper only had a year on the job. I was afraid to do anything until I was in second or thir third year, and I became resident after my third year. Okay. Right so, a lot, of, a lot of incidents. Okay. I'll, sort of, I didn't mean to cut you off, Andy. No, that's um, okay. Go ahead. So, I will. Um, Are we able if I, to, if, if suppose we did go for a second trooper? Are we able to talk to um, the barracks and say, look, we want a, a rookie. We, we don't want to pay. We've got a, a budget limitation. You know, we don't want somebody who's got a lot of experience. Yeah, I'd have to ask. It's, you know, they're, um, they're all unionized employees. So I'm not sure if you can make a request like that, but I'll, I can ask. So I have, I have a number of questions I need to ask them and I'll see what I can come back with next week um, to sort of have the next level of conversation. How does that sound? I want to add one thing. I got one other thing to add. When we got rid of the resident trooper 12 years ago because he didn't do his job, basically. Well, the commanding officer came down here and presented to the board of selectmen from Troop L. And also, there's a resident trooper sergeant. He was here. 
but it didn't do any good. Right? We started a petition to get the resident trooper back. You can talk to any of the former selectmen, Bruce Adams, he voted against it, but that, when he was on the board of selectmen, then he became first. He said, oh my God, <laughs> he couldn't take it. He called the barracks and they say, we, oh yeah, we'll respond to that. When, when someone's Whenever free they not. felt like it, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So it's one-on-one, -on -one, okay? It's, it's you pay for what you get, sorry, bye. Don't be sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I say one last thing uh, about this? Um, then we can move on if you want. Um, so, so that line, police protection, two fifty-seven. Um, so that is that is that's Andrew Fisher and all the extra help uh, that might that might be that might use to call in. So, so for for a line item, it probably makes sense just to keep that as is. But I don't know, is there, is there a way to maybe break that into two? Like, you know, one line is Trooper Fisher and there's another line that we know we have X amount of dollars for help for Trooper Fisher. This is what we have for the summertime or for high traffic uh, times in the, in the fall. Um, I don't know if we want to consider that or not. Maybe that's unrealistic, but, uh, but that would give me an idea like this is... You know, so we, we do have extra protection because we do, um, you know, we don't have two full time troopers, uh, but we do have some help and uh, when it's available. So there there yeah, has yeah. been because the their numbers are so low, there have yeah. been multiple times where Andrew has made the ask and they just don't have anybody. OK, so that's the risk. OK, just and idea. OK, I, I, yeah, let me add something to that, too. Those troopers are up there are burned out because they're working so much overtime. Yep. I'd say last summer, I had a young girl at six in the morning knocking on my door. She had a flat tire, okay? I went out and I can't change a tire anyway. I called the barracks. Trooper Fisher was working the midnight shift here. He came, he changed the tire. <laughs> I did quite a few when I was resident trooper. <laughs> All right. And your response time out of the Lishfield barracks, I've seen it as they go by my house. When there's an accident, all right, I got a scanner, I hear the accident, and 15, 20 minutes later before they come down the road, that's when Fisher's not working. I, I don't have his schedule, so I don't know when he's working or when he's not. But I've called him with some information on his cell phone that I find out he's on a day off. But he takes, he re responds to a lot of his calls on his cell phone, even when he's off. That's, and thank you very much again for having me. Thanks, Andy. And also just a reminder that the days that Andrew is not on tour, we share the that patrol one trooper with Warren and Washington. So they're covering, I think it's over a hundred miles um, of territory. So if they're, you know, dealing with an accident in Warren and we have an accident here, that trooper is not gonna come to our call. They have to get a trooper coming from Troop L if there's somebody available. So you start, you know, there's a there's only so many resources is, is my point. So let's move on to um, grants. So line starting on line 221. We have a number of grants um, where people, a number of grants. I know, I know how it was going to go. Not a lot of these hadn't come in yet. So why are we talking about grants? Today? Let me. Um, can we just hold on one second? I just want to see if Andy's um, going to head out from this meeting so we can close out Zoom in.
Thank you. So, um, Looking at the increases, if you look at the last column, um, and this is really a question of, do we want, um, are we going to invite everyone to come in and um, meet with us? Do we want just the people who um, are asking for an increase? How do we want to flow so that we can get invites out to them for either next week or the week after. Did we see everyone last year or just the increases? Um, we did not see everyone last year. Um, not quite sure who, if we identified if it was just increases. Um, you invited anybody with a grant of $10,000 or more last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's keep to that. Unless you want to just do the increases. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards um, the increases unless we're going to be looking at cutting. You know, previous boards, um, there were discussions about do we, you know, are these grants meant to fund these organizations forever? Are they meant, were they meant to fund them to, you know, provide a number of years of funding? Um, you know, we're still coming out of the pandemic. It's, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, Five that are over 10,000, but um, one, two of them are not in that, I'm sorry, over 10,000, but two that have increases are not in that, mm. meet that criteria even. So what, the Northwest Corner Chore Service, what types of chores are they doing? So that would, that, would be a them. <laughs> that would be a good reason to invite them in to just ask them some of these questions. So do we want to do anyone who's asking for an increase? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, we need people to justify the increase. I don't, you know, no matter the amount, I believe. Well, there are a number of um, pretty robust justifications in the folder. But we'll... So Rufus, are you in agreement with that? That we'll ask anybody who's asking for an increase to meet with us next week? Sure. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. And because I really wanna stick to our 90 minute, um, the, I think really the last bucket that I wanna sort of open the discussion on, is um, so we Barbara has put in four percent across the board for um, across the board salary uh, payroll increases, and we have there's a number of departments that have submitted requests for increases beyond that four percent that the treasurer included, and I just like to know how um, y'all would like to proceed regarding those requests. Well, I think we have to look at um, anything above the 4% individually. 
and take a close look at their rationale, justification. Yeah. So you can, the, the document that you all have, that right column has notes from Barbara on um, narrative that was provided. So most of them are indicating no support provided. Ready? want to send out an email to ask for some for a narrative justification um I, mean, I think justification is needed, whether it's uh, email or uh, verbal or both. Um, justification is needed for that. I think it would be helpful to have something written that we can put in the folder and then we can review. I agree. So for timing, um, how do you want to go with um, timing so that, you know, do we want to discuss this next week? Do we want to discuss this at the following weeks? I would love to talk about it in the next week. So we do have some employees. So today's Wednesday, we do have a number, number of employees that are part-time. So they may not be in the rest of the week. So we may have to bump it out to the following week. Okay. If that's easier than we, you know, two, week, two weeks from now. Is I think fine. it's fair to, yeah. so that, you know, the, the clock starts, you know, on Monday, but we'll send that. Sure. We'll send it out, you know, tonight or tomorrow. Okay, so two weeks from, so that'll be the 22nd. Yeah, okay. that'll be that meeting on the 22nd. Sure. Okay, so so we are meeting, uh, just just so we're correct, uh, so I'm clear, 15th, 22nd, and the 1st. Yep. And and we're kind of stopping at that point. Okay, I mean, well, the, stop, but, uh, we right, the, um, we have to present the budget to the Board of Finance on March 22nd. 22nd, okay. And we need to vote on it. Barbara needs time to update it. Um, Your regular meeting is on the 22nd, which starts at four. Are you changing the time on the 22nd? 
of a special meeting prior to it? No, I was talking about March 22nd was the. I know, I but, the but you just pushed BOF. you just pushed the conversation for the salaries to the 22nd of February, which is your regular meeting date. Right. OK, I see what you're saying. So um, that day, I, I think there was a conflict. So we were going to start at two. I think, Glenn, you might have had something. Um, I can do two. Is that what's what's what? so we could do two to four and then go right into the regular board of selectmen meeting. Oh, I see. So, so a special meeting at two to four and then a regular meeting starting at four. Yes. A nice long day. Um, that's gonna, uh, there's actually, I hadn't written it down. So I'm, I'm good. If we want to start, did we talk about two o'clock or even earlier? We did talk about two. Yeah, I can do that. So that'll be a two to four. So next week will be three to four thirty. The following week will be two to four. Okay. And then the following week, Wednesday, March 1st, we'll also, I'm sorry. Yeah, 3 yep. to 4.30 on March 1st as well. And the plan is for us to vote that budget to move so that Barbara can update it, send it out to the Board of Finance with plenty of time for their meeting on March 22nd. Okay. So are we doing two to four and then going straight into a regular meeting or should we do two to three thirty and take a break and yeah that's not a bad idea it's going to be uh, a long long afternoon yeah okay yeah, so on the 22nd two to three thirty good so rounding back so that'll be when um, we'll be discussing those um, narratives. Okay. So next week, I'm going to try to get some more information on um, costs resident for resident state trooper beyond that one federal grant dig around, see if there are any other grants. Um, and then we can, I'd like to um, next week have them after that discussion, have a motion so that um, because as part of the process, if we, if the board declines to include it in the budget, then um, should Andy want to take a, take the route of a um, petition, this in a formal way lets him know that the board of selectmen chose not to add it to our draft budget so that he can then that's the correct process darlene i think i saw darlene yes that is what attorney debella advised Right. But Jean, I think besides cost, you you need to come with some actual, you know, whether you get it from Andrew or what. Right. You know, number of calls, number of get him to give some specifics as, as to the stresses of the job, so to speak. Otherwise, without that, I think you're you're facing the same situation as the SRO. I don't think necessarily it's because it's an SRO. 
And then if, it, if we do go with a second trooper, then would we want to allow the Board of Education to increase presence in the schools on a regular basis? <clears throat> right. Um, you know, so that that's something to consider too. <clears throat> And we're at 20 after four, and I would like to stay committed to that 90 minutes. Um, so I will um, open it up for public comment. If anyone has any, I'm gonna sort of scan the room here. Melissa, do you, um, if you, you can just ask the question that you wanted to ask since we're in public comment. I just want to know where you find the um, backup. You you keep mentioning the folder. Sorry, I have a dog here. That's so the there's a um, in the oh for for which sorry. Well, you mentioned the grant stuff, but but all the increases it, it should be public information if there's backup that you just mentioned people should review. So is Barbara still on the call? Yes, but I didn't think to include the entirety of the Kent population when I shared the folder with right. the budget documents. Right. But that's open to the public, right? Sure, anybody can request it. So it should be in the meeting folder if our selectmen are keep referring to the documents in the folder. Right. And rather than having to create a folder every time, you know, creating, moving these all around, what we may do is put a folder link um, maybe on the website. I don't know, Barbara, maybe we can figure this out offline. I mean. I mean, if the public shouldn't have to ask every time they want to see the document you're all referring to. Sure. So we'll work on that. Any other public comment? I don't see any. So it is 422 and I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. And I'll second that. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Thanks everybody for coming and spending the time. I think we made some good progress. <laughs>